Hi guys, it's Dan here and um, I thought I'd try my hand at a little bit of a different video uh, today. I've been reading a lot of, uh, well I've been reading audiobooks recently for the first time. I've, I started with Lord of the Rings um, and I was going to do reviews of them as I was going but what I've realised is that actually it's kind of a whole different beast um, listening to a book. It's it's a different skill. So I don't really, f I feel like I need to get into listening to audiobooks more before I can really start reviewing them. I need to get more used to the format. Um, so what I thought I'd do instead was kind of a, a vlog type video where I'll just give a few little thoughts as I'm going and because uh, with audiobooks obviously I'm not just sitting here reading I'm out and about I thought I'd just take some you know footage of things that I'm doing uh, yeah as I'm as I'm reading the audiobooks so here it is okay so what I'm doing is I'm taking some books into uh, Axminster because I want to get rid of these. There's a swap shop in um, the train station in town and I saw the other day they've got a load of Asimov, a load of Raymond Feist in there so I thought I would swap some of my books out for some of them if they're still there when I get there. So um, yeah I want to get rid of these. We've got a couple of Terry Brooks ones in the Shannara Chronicles. I read both of these and I just don't think Terry Brooks is like a very good writer. Uh, it says on oh, this is the master of modern fantasy and I would definitely argue with that. Um, <clears throat> then I've got Beyond the Wall by Tanya Landman which is like a, a YA historical fiction about um, Roman Britain and to be honest I'm just not that into YA so that's why I'm getting rid of that one. And we've got uh, I don't even know what this one's about. It's a fantasy. It's been sitting on my shelf for I don't know how long. I haven't read it. Um, it's called Frozen. But yeah, I'm never going to read that, I think, just because, well, look at it. Um, so yeah, I'll let it go. And we've got The Last Viking by Berwick Coates, which is about the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Um, and I'd, it's historical fiction again, and to be honest, uh, it, it just wasn't that great, so I'm definitely not going to reread it, so I might as well get rid of it. Then we've got Kings of Albion by Julian Rathbone, which is kind of um, uh, it's a medieval historical fiction written in the style of like a travel log. But I, I started it, didn't finish it, and I just wasn't a big fan of his writing style. And um, we've got another historical fiction. This is a historical fiction uh, like mystery. Party and Shot by David Wishart, which, you know, I read, it's pretty sure, it was alright, but I'm just not that into mysteries, so get rid of that. And the last one I've got is Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, which is just dry as a bone. Did not enjoy that. Um, so yeah, get rid of that. So we had like a massive, like, gale the other day, really high winds, 60 mile an hour and this old beech tree which is probably like 150 years old just split off and that's been really handy for getting through the Lord of the Rings audiobook because we've had to chop it all up and split it so this is going to be firewood for next year and it turns out that Splitting firewood is an excellent chance to get through a lot of audiobook. So it's a bit of a, a cloudy day, but just thought I'd give a bit of a uh, view over the valley. This is the valley that I live in, uh, the Char Valley in Dorset. Look at that, lovely rolling hills. 
Uh, I don't know if you can make out the, uh, the church steeple just behind the trees there. We're just opposite that, that's where I live. Isn't Dorset great? Okay, so just a few general thoughts on uh, the Lord of the Rings audiobook that I'm listening to. I think, well, with audiobooks in general, right, it's the first one I've ever listened to, and I think I've, I'm discovering it is a skill, much like reading is a skill that improves with practice. I think listening to an audiobook is a similar thing. Uh, I keep on, you know, sort of <laughs> drifting off and then coming back and it's a good job that I've read the book before because otherwise I'd be struggling to follow it I think. So I reckon what I'm gonna do is um well I'm glad that yeah like I say I'm glad I've read the book before otherwise I, I wouldn't really be able to follow it too well. I think with time I'll get better at that. So I, I reckon the first few audiobooks that I read I'm gonna try and do them uh, as rereads because that way at least I'll, I'll know what the story is already and if I do end up drifting off uh, into my own thoughts it's not going to be so much of a problem uh, I'm not going to keep having to rewind them or whatever um, now the Lord of the Rings audiobook in particular it's, um, it's one guy reading it, it's not like a multicast thing so um, what I've <laughs> found with this guy is it's just like an old white guy doing it, so he's great at doing the voices of like Gandalf and Aragorn and Boromir and whatever, but when it comes to doing the female characters, he's not so great, and also when it comes to doing the, the bad guys, he's just, he's just not that, uh, he's not that scary, so the bad guys don't come across as that scary. Also, um, you know, in The Lord of the Rings, there's a lot of songs and poetry that sort of appear in the book. And in the audiobook, the guy sings them, which, uh, I mean, his voice isn't that great, so I don't enjoy them too much. And in the book, I would normally sort of skip past them, and I tend to find that when he is singing, I'm not really listening to what he's saying. <laughs> so, mm, not too keen on that either. So here we go, this is the Axe Valley. Gonna be walking down through this. Nice walk. And yeah, you can't quite make it out, but right over there in the distance, that's where I'm heading. That's where the Asimov and Feist books are. So anyway, I'll crack on with that. Take a bit of a shortcut, I think, through the woods. It'll cut out a few minutes. And it kind of feels uh, like this is the kind of landscape you should be walking through when you're uh, reading Lord of the Rings anyway. Right, so I've just been listening to uh, The Return of the King. I'm coming up to the end of that. Obviously that's the last book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And I've been listening to this on 50% increased speed. Uh, rather than you know normal speed so I'm listening to it faster and I found that that actually helps with you know not losing the thread of it I'm able to concentrate on it uh, better listening to it faster so uh, yeah you go you live and learn and I think I'll carry on listening to the rest of the books on that speed um, also I was having a bit of a think because I know I said I was going to do rereads uh, on the audiobooks but what I might do uh, for the next one is try a non-fiction book on it because I think that would be a like I think audiobooks might be a decent format for that but you know it's all a bit of an experiment so we'll see how it goes so this is what I'm using to listen to the mp3s it's uh, well listen to the audiobooks that is it's uh, just a really cheapo uh, MP3 player, but it does everything I need. 
Um, I think it costs about 20 quid. It weighs absolutely nothing. The battery lasts for like 30 hours. Uh, you can put bookmarks in, which is really handy uh, when you're listening to long audiobook files. And um, yeah, like I say, you can increase the speed as well. So yeah, it's pretty handy. The only uh, downside of this one is it doesn't have a, uh, a lock function for the keys. Uh, so for the buttons, that is. So what team, what happens sometimes is that one of the buttons will get knocked and it will skip on to the next chapter, which, you know, if your hands are tied, you're doing something, then that's not very useful. Um, oh, also, it's got a Bluetooth connection as well, so I can, uh, if I'm, you know, doing, working outside, doing something physical, I don't have all wires in the way, which is uh, really useful, because my last MP3 player, I, I ended up busting the headphone connector because I kept on catching the wire when I was listening to it, so that's a really useful feature. There we go, Axminster, and that's where we're heading. Well, that's where I'm heading. Okay, so this is what I picked up from the swap shop in, a, in exchange for those books that I showed you before. These are all uh, Raymond Feist. Uh, there are six there, we've got the King's Buccaneer, Ooh, hold on, here we go. Here we go. King's Buccaneer. Shards of a Broken Crown. Shadow of a Dark Queen. Talon of the Silver Hawk. Rise of a Merchant Prince. And Rage of a Demon King. Now, I've never actually read any Raymond Feist, but I have heard good things, so I'm looking forward to giving them a go. And I don't know where these fit in terms of series or anything, so I will, yeah, work that out once I get home. The next one I've got is uh, Jimmy the Hand, Legends of the Rift War, and this is, this is by Raymond Feist and Steve Sterling. And as it turns out, uh, I didn't know that, that, that this collaboration existed, but Steve Sterling, or SM Sterling, is um, a US alternate history author and actually has written one of my favourite series of all time, so that is uh, pretty cool and I'm definitely interested to check this one out. Uh, then I've got a couple of um, uh, sci-fi books here. So Robert Heinlein, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Um, I've heard good things about Heinlein, not read any of his stuff before, so that'll be interesting. And uh, Isaac Asimov, uh, Forward the Foundation, which is the last book in the Foundation series, which uh, is something that I'm looking to get into. I haven't got the first book yet, though, so I won't be getting to this one anytime soon. But anyway, got it, and um, I'll keep an eye out for the first one. There we go, home again. Okay, so I finished the Lord of the Rings audiobook, and yeah, actually, um, once I sped it up to uh, 1.5 speed, it was yeah much more enjoyable experience. So I'm glad that I chose something that I'd read before as my first audiobook because I think. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel like I was losing anything when I, I hadn't been able to follow the story because I was, you know, losing concentration or whatever. Um, I think what I'm going to do for the next audiobook, I've downloaded um, a little history of philosophy, but I forget who it's by, but um, I got recommended, well, it was part of a sort of uh, top philosophy reads by uh, Justin from Triumphal Reads. Uh, I'll put a link to the video in the description below. He's a really excellent booktuber and I highly recommend you check him out. Um, so anyway, yeah, I think that's the next audiobook that I'm going to listen to. And um, I'm actually going to start that now, I think, while I spend a bit of time reorganising my bookshelves. Um, because I've got, well, a whole load of books to add. Well, I'll show you, actually. So yeah, all of these books here need to go onto these shelves here, 
and as you can see they're already pretty full so I'm going to have to make some space I might have to find uh, some new space for some of the tools or some of the like wood finishing stuff um, but we'll see about that anyway I'll, I'll yeah I'll work that out as I go but anyway in terms of books here I've got um, well these ones these are all the fiction that I'm going to be uh, putting on the shelves. There's 48 books there. Um, I've already read some of them, haven't read others, and it's a mixture of fantasy, science fiction, and historical fiction. Um, now I'm quite excited to get into uh, some of them actually. Then I've got eight general fiction, uh, general non fiction books there, I should say, uh, mostly about. Uh, Farming, vegetable growing, and uh, a couple, uh, yeah, general, you know, agricultural stuff. Seeing as how I'm a farmer, um, and then I've also got 16 books of history and mythology. I don't really like to separate history and mythology too much because there's so much of a link between uh, a lot of it. But um, fortunately, I do have some other shelves that are for my history books and um, so I I built this bed last year and I put a load of storage space well shelvings underneath for all of my history books so I do have a bit of spare space underneath there for some uh, for some extra books so hopefully they will all fit on we shall see if not I might have to go around the other side I've got some like tools and general rope and stuff stored on the other side but um yeah so I might have to move them we'll see but anyway yeah I guess I'll start um clearing some space on those shelves there right okay then there we go uh, some empty shelves uh well I mean I've left the tools on We'll see how it's looking when I'm getting towards the bottom, so uh, yeah, and I'll work out how much space I need from then. Here we have all of the uh, fiction, yeah, all the novels there, um, some short story collections, quite a lot of that. Uh, here is the stuff that is new and it's going to be going on, the stuff that I showed you earlier. This is the sort of general non-fiction, I guess. Um, I haven't taken the history stuff out from under my bed yet. I'll, I'm going to do that last. Uh, yeah, so in terms of a plan, um, I am going to put all the fiction starting up here in the top left and um, that is going to be in alphabetical order by author's surname so and that might be boring but uh, at least I'm going to know where everything is um, yeah and then once I've got the fiction on I will sort of assess how much shelf space I need for the rest of it Okay, so I've been listening to a little history of philosophy by Nigel Warburton, is the author. Um, heard the first two chapters while I was getting the books off the shelves, and it's it's really just a, a very basic introduction to philosophy uh, that goes chronologically from um, Socrates. And I don't know where it ends. I've only had the first two chapters. So we've got Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. Just moving on to the sceptics. Um, as I say, it's very basic. Just sort of 10 or 15 minute chapters on uh, each of these to just give a very basic introduction to all these different kinds of philosophy, which is exactly what I need because I've never studied philosophy before. So this is, uh, I think, going to be a really useful grounding and it will give me the information that I need uh, to explore some areas that I'm more interested in later. So uh, yeah, pretty pleased with that as far as it goes. Um, I guess I'll crack on with it. Okay, so these are the new books that are going on and I've put them in alphabetical order by uh, surname of the author. Um, just, you know, 
first letters together here. So I've got a lot of F's there because there's quite a few Raymond E. Feist books and quite a lot of H's there because I've got half a dozen Robin Hobb books to go on. And the rest of it's a pretty even spread. I've even got three Z's. I've got three books by uh, Roger Zelazny. So, um, yeah. I uh, guess I've got to get them on. But I've made a bit of a schoolboy error because uh, if you... Yeah. The A's here. A, C, whatever. All the early letters in the alphabet are at the back there. So I've got to uh, get them out from the back to go on the shelves first. Unfortunately. Um, so that was done. I guess I better crack on with it. Okay, so that's the first row of shells done. Um, and we're up to uh, the Emperor series by Con Igolden. Okay, so that's the middle shells done. And I'm up to Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, so, yeah, not too bad. Uh, we're halfway through the alphabet, I guess. Um, and as far as the Nigel Warburton History of Philosophy book goes, we've gone through Epicureanism and now we're on to Stoicism. So, yeah, didn't really know anything about them. Getting the absolute basics. Actually pretty enjoyable. Okay, so just finished the uh, chapter on Stoicism uh, in the Little History of Philosophy. and. Um, yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. There's, um, it's basically the concept that you, uh, you, you just forget about the stuff that you can't change, or at least don't worry about the things that you can't change anyway. So yeah, I mean that makes sense. Um, and also Epicureanism, pretty interesting. Uh, it's the idea that you can find happiness in a simple life, living with your friends, you know, I mean, makes a lot of sense. Right, okay, so I've got all the fiction on the shelves, and as you can see, I'm really running pretty low on space for the non-fiction. Um, so I think now I'm going to start organising my non-fiction books, and I'm going to generally organize them by sort of theme I think okay so these are the non-fiction books kind of vaguely organized by topic we've got like field guides outdoor bushcraft stuff uh, quite a big agriculture pile walking sustainable living craft type stuff football this is like uh, dictionaries and, and you know word related stuff, more writing and word related stuff. Um, these are like some kind of, yeah, kind of biographical slash journalistic works. Quite a big miscellaneous pile and a couple of cookbooks. So um, yeah, I'm going to start putting them on that one shelf that I've got over there see how far I get and um, see how much space I need to clear. Okay there we go, uh, so that is all the fiction and all the uh, general non-fiction up on the shelves and yeah that looks pretty good. Uh, I managed to keep the power tool shelf uh, for power tools. I've still got uh, some chisels and gouges and stuff there, and tools, screws, wood stain, glue, general gobbins there as well. I'm gonna have to find somewhere for all of this stuff, not sure where that's gonna go, and I'm gonna have to find places for all of this as well. I think I'm going to use some of these as like shelf ornaments because you know they're all tools and I use them all but they're also pretty attractive bits of kit. I mean like check out this mortise gauge for example that's like you know rosewood and brass that's pretty nice. Uh, you got the Veritas marking gauge which I mean, I think that looks pretty attractive. That can be a nice little ornament. Um, block plane, you know, 
looks pretty sweet really so I reckon they'll be uh, I'll use them as shelf ornaments so I've got you know kind of places for most of these I'll need to find somewhere for the clamps to go and uh, maybe a couple of other things but yeah uh, we'll see but anyway that is the majority of my books I've just got to do the history ones now so um yeah we'll see uh, we'll see how that goes I might save that for another day we'll see